what we have so far with our beautiful oops let's go big go big or go home all right with our notation we know that well you can tell me what do we know what does if you see f of 3 equals 2 what does that mean f of 3 equals 2 yeah, it means when x is 3, y equals 2. So that's a fancy way of saying the point 3, 2. Right? We're just fancying it up a bit. Where is our class? Where is Jasmine? Yes, I saw them sitting on the sidelines. I saw you. I saw you sitting on the sidelines. Your team is not coaching, is not thingy. If I had one, let's see f of x. f of x equals 2. x squared take 5. And I then said, please, please, what is f of minus 1? What would you do? <laughs> they said it the other way around. But anyway, yeah, good. Replace wherever x is, so morgues, all that means, notation, it, all it means is wherever x is up here, replace it with this thing here, minus 1. So instead of saying 2 times x squared, it'll be 2 times minus 1 squared, take 5, and blah de blah de blah Right? It's very, very nice, very simple. What they're going to do now, stick with that, but they're going to test your algebra a little bit. And that is exactly what we need. So we will embrace. So when we look at stuff like this, and I love the order that they're doing it all in, it's all over the shop. But maybe you saw, oh yeah, you probably wouldn't have seen this last year. Anyway, everybody happy they could evaluate g of 2. And again, Morgie Meister, right? We've done a different function, so instead of saying f, they've said g, but same thing. Yeah. Right? Very straightforward. Zero, all good. A half, minus a half, happy. Comes to this, find a value of x such that g of x does not exist. Now, there are several situations where a function will not exist. We've looked at it once already, and that would be when we have the square root of something. When do we know when we'll get no solution? Right, if the thing under here, if this is a negative number, then that will be no go. There is another situation that we should have come across when we've been doing our maths, specifically dealing with fractionies. When do we get yes? Right, you cannot divide by zero. Right, so if you try on your calculator, go five divided by zero, as much as my year 10s today try to convince me that the answer is zero, it's not. If you don't believe me, pop it in your calculator now. Do any number divide by zero, it will give you ma error, which we know to be undefined. So basically, B is saying, for what value of x makes the denominator equal to zero? What would be that value? Four, not negative four. If it was negative four, minus four take four gives you minus eight. So that's not zero. So for this one, we would say x is four. Correct? Oh, you go off topic. That's okay. Is zero one by zero an exception? Anything divide by itself? Ooh, I don't know. It was it, so the question was: Is zero divided by zero an exception to the rule? I think they might go with the zero first. Just try it on your calculator, see what happens. But quite frankly, we just go, Pfft, that's not there. Because what, yeah. what, where would it be? What is it? Mm, nothing. Anyway, the next question that people asked when I took survey: Question nine. So those who did not get up to nine. You should be writing this down. So, Al, I'm not quite sure why you're still playing with your laptop when you should be writing. You didn't even have a pen out. I mean, you didn't do... You know, see why I get upset? All right. Ready? We've got a function. We, by now, know what this means. It says, when we replace x with 2, the answer should equal... One. So we are exactly going to do this. Now, some of you are giving away marks galore because your setting out is very poor. 
So I'm writing this and then underneath I'm going to go right. What does that mean? It means wherever x is I'm replacing it with 2, so directly underneath. I could write a2, but that looks a bit gooby. So I'm writing 2a, agreed, plus b. So that's f of 2. What comes after f of 2? It says equals, I put equals, it says 1, I put 1. We happy with that? We're going to do the same thing with, shall I colour change it up, with this one. So again, I'm going to write it, f of minus 3 equals 11. And we go through the same drama, wherever x is, so still we're going back to f, wherever x is, I'm replacing it with minus 3. So this is minus 3a plus b. Equals 11. We, oui. you have two equations with two unknowns. Now you could go to your calculator and solve it with simultaneous equations. Well, now, when I say that, does everyone go, Yes, I know how to do it? Or, right, good. Pass it to people at the back. So if we've got two equations as we have here, two linear, psst, we're going to go down into equation. I'm also curious that you would have used this to solve quadratics, gone into polynomial or even cubics. So did you ever look and read, right? Simultaneous, let's go in there. Who's never used this before? Excellent. So I want you to go, hmm, let's go. F1, what do you think you'd do now? How many unknowns? Two. Never used it before, but you can read the screen. Look what it says up here. When it's in this form, pop it in. So we're popping in. What's A? N. It is called the coefficient of X. Coefficient of Y equals your value. So for this first one, we're going to pop in 2, 1, 1. Agreed? 2, enter, 1, enter, 1, enter. And may I just confess, my heart is breaking a little bit, the fact that you guys have not touched this before. Oh, he's living on the edge. Minus 3, 1 and 11. Oops. And then you solve. So A is minus 2, B is 5. Oh, well, I'll do it now. Okay, so this is your bestie. Love it. However, it might say show algebraically. So then you have the option. Who can remember? What are the two options when you're solving simultaneous equations? Sort of, yes. So there's elimination, I think you might have been talking about, and then there's also substitution. Okay. In this case, because we're looking and I can see that the B, they've got the same coefficient. That's really sweet. So I can just subtract one from the other. So I'll do that now, but please sing out if you don't remember this. So we go 2a plus b equals 1. And then we've got minus 3a plus b equals 11. And we have to ask ourselves, what will make these b's eliminate, disappear? Add or subtract? Subtract. So we put a nice big subtract there. 2a, take, take. 3a becomes 5a, b take b, no b. 1 take 11 is minus 10, and you can see, hey, get rid of the times 5, divide by 5, you get minus 2, which is one of the answers that we got there. How do we get our b value? Sub. Sub it into either one, it doesn't really matter right, the easiest one that you want to do. So if I pop it into the blue one, right, I end up with 2 times minus 2 plus b equals 1 minus 4 plus b. And lo and behold, get rid of a take 4 plus 4, 
that was the other solution that we got. Yeah, yeah? So one of the things that we are sort of jumping to save a little bit of time is simultaneous equations. And that's one of the things you're going to look at. Videos over the weekend, do a couple and use your calculator. It is essential. There was a question in your test where you would use your calculator. <laughs> Nick, you want to come and say it on video? Start there dancing. Sorry. Who can tell me just in their own words what is domain? No, domain? The width. The width. More specific, please. So when we, you're, I love, yeah, so the domain, you're going like that, you can't see that on the video, but you're, he's moving his hands horizontally. That's the X values, right? So domain is all the values that X can take, Y the range, uh, range is the values that Y can take, and yes, it's got it here. So domain, range, and what we have to say and write down is when well, it can be restricted, all right? So in order to do that, they just remind you about function notation, which I think you should already know because we've already used it sometimes. Yeah? So we're happy with this. What does that mean? X is between the values of A and B. Okay? The round dots mean that it can be this value of A. The open dot means that it cannot. So if we were looking at another example here where we had A, B, we'll go red this time, and it was an open dot. How does that change? Well, it's just less than, greater than. Yes? Yes. The question was, sorry, would those dots show up in a test? Absolutely. Um, notice when you've got, this is alternative way of writing it, uh, IB, East Coast, use a, uh, West Coast, use a lot of this notation. So all this means is X can be contained. That means is an element. Is an element of is the technicality, but you know what? You can just say is. X is. Anyone know what that letter is? That's Greek. Epsilon. That's right, Greek. Epsilon. Um, so when we've got less than or equal to, we use a square bracket. What do you think we would use when it's just less than? Like it goes up to but can't actually include it. Instead of a square bracket, yes, we use a round bracket. So, you know, not overly complicated, I don't think. We happy with that? As happy as you can be, Coops, on a Friday last lesson. Yeah, I'll get you. We can see here, if you were to say it in words, we'd say X could be, it can't be B, but it could be beyond. So X is greater than. B. How do we write that in fancy pants notation? So round B and then it can go up to infinity. I don't think they really care if that's a round or a square when you're talking about infinity. Includes infinity just before infinity. I mean really. Okay um, and notice if I just said what does this symbol mean? Ooh, like could you these are the same yeah same thing so it's in this or it's in that so they're just starting to write things a couple of different ways and you need to be able to read it and know what it means do you think that's okay give you a moment again this is in your textbook this is now on one note if you wanted to see it um, some little things, I hope you have seen this before, what does that mean? Can be any real number, okay, anything. So X can be any real number, you use that in your investigation. Right? 
right? We've talked about this. Does that make sense? Why we're saying x is greater than or equal to zero? Yep, why? Because we can't take the square root of a negative number. You can of zero anything more. I'm going to give you a couple more terms in a minute. Right, who can explain this one to us? I think we've discussed that already. You can't divide by zero. That's what we just talked about. And how come we've got a square root, but why is it greater than zero, not greater than or equal to? Yeah, it's combining those two, all right? Because, yes, the square root of zero would be zero, but then you're stuck because you can't divide by zero. So ones that we need to just um, remember. You have seen another symbol, because this, this whole topic is about notation, yeah? You have seen a symbol for that. Hmm. What did that mean? If I, yes, if I said x can be that, right, z, these are integers, which are basically whole numbers. Minus 2, minus 5, minus 8, 0, 1, 2, 3. When we go z with a positive, 1, 2, 3, 4, positive integers. Just get used to that notation and be fancy pants. All right? Again, in your book, I would not, I repeat, I would not copy this stuff down. It's in your book. We're about to do it over and over again, and you'll get the, the swing of it. But in your textbook, it is there for you to refer to if you need it. Okay? Not too much maths to do now. We're just playing. So if you've got, I can't keep going this, you should have your textbook open, and you can have that in front of you. But here we go. We just have to say, what is the domain and the range for each of these functions? So, domain. We look at our x values. Agreed? So what is this saying? Could it be anything to the left of minus 1? Niet. It has to be? Greater than. So, you say greater than, but then you have to do a little bit more of a check. Could it actually be 1? Minus. Could it actually be minus 1? Why? That's a yes. It's a closed up. Okay? That's beautiful. If you want to fancy it up, you can do that. So they put the brackets. I put curly brackets. Oops. I put curly brackets around mine. <laughs> they put curly brackets around this too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay? I really don't think that you should have to put this in both forms, but if they asked you to put it in the set notation, then you would go minus 1 to infinity. I don't like that. Here I know very clearly that it's x values. Here, got to put the d, got to put another x. I'm a fan of this. We okay with that? Who wants to have a go at the range? Home, home on the range. So the y values. So now your eyes, instead of going across that way, they are going up and down, right? So it's from three. Why? y is less than or equal to 3. Do we get that? Now, do you need to draw the graph? I don't think so, but if you think you're having trouble, draw the graph so you can go back and have a look at it. So, give you a moment and then we'll do b, then we'll do c, because this is, oh, and I did, oh, I am recording. A little bit of notation for c. Okay, let's have a look at b to b. Not to be, let's have a look at our x. Who could you say your x values to me in words? Okay. I'd be going, it's in between minus one and five. It can be five, but it can't be one. Would you agree? So for me, I'm going x, it's in between minus one and five. And as you're doing these, 
it's really hard for you guys because it's on your computer. When we had a book, you could just go, ooh, X's, just so you don't mix them up with the Y's. But anyway, so it has to be less than or equal to 5, but greater than minus 1. Notice my symbols are going in the same direction. You should never have them pointing in different directions as a union. Yeah? If I said I'll give you 10 bucks to write the set notation for this, what would you say? Round bracket minus 1. 5 square bracket. Yeah, I know. Don't like it. This is far more attractive. Would you agree? Yes. If notation can be. Oh, yes, it can be attractive. The notation can be attractive. Absolutely. Yep, D for domain. Oh, yeah, I should do it here. Like there's no, you know, as long as you are, you can say which one it is. Just don't leave it blank. Right. Go back to our beautiful set notation. Spec people, start practicing your curvy brackets because you'll need that for your proofs. Okay. So your y values, they're between 1 and 3. So in the middle of 1 and 3, less than or equal to 3, greater than 1. You know, if we left that up for the little year nines, they'd be going, <laughs> what the, that's so hard. Look at all those symbols. We go, yeah. All good? Last one and then I'm leaving you to your own devices. C, we're going to look at this type of function soon, right? Anyone know what these dotted lines are called? Oh, well done. They are indeed. These are called asymptotes. And it is where the function is undefined. So when we went back up here, asymptotes, right, when we were graphing, if we were to graph this function, that's what that would look like, that funky one. It has the two arcs. X equals zero, X equals zero. X equals four will be the vertical line where you have that dotted bit. And two, Y equals two, would be the other one. And you will learn that next week. So this is where I am a little bit sneaky and I would go x. How would you describe your values of x? So use your, it's the finger, right? This keeps on going and going and going, has an x value, yeah? This way keeps on going and going and going, has an x value. So should I just say x can be any number? It cannot be. Even though it says that x equals it cannot be. So I just go x cannot be 2. You can have a massive argument go, oh, you should actually write x. Can, it can be any real number, comma, x cannot be 2. <laughs> x cannot be 2. And sticking with that theme, what about y? Cannot be negative 1. So we're not, you know, doing too much of algebra stuff. It's very pleasant. We? Your turn. Your turn. You get to. Just um, crack on. One question, though, I wanted to ask. Two part A. Look at the graph. Temperature, blah, 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 blah. Explain why a temperature graph like this must be a function. Explain to Morgan what's the difference between a relation and a function. The vertical line test, right? So vertical line, it means that one x value can only have one y value. So why does this have to be a function? Brody? Um, put it in context with the question. 
So no, don't give me vertical line test. Give me context of the question. Yeah. Yes. Time always moves forward, so it can't go back along the x-axis. Yes. Anyone else? One set temperature, so it's like. There's so only one. As the time. There's only one temperature at one time. That's right. There can only be one temperature at one time. We can't say, oh, look at that. It's 10 past three. It is 15 degrees and 25 degrees at one spot. We're assuming it's one spot. Is it one spot? Yeah, at Perth. I guess, yes, I got okay. I haven't said that. I know you, I can argue now one suburb compared to another, but we're saying the same spot. <laughs> Very good. All right. So you're good to go. You're doing these ones. Capiche? And we're just trucking on. With some of these, guess what? If you think, I don't know what they look like, you could draw them if you wanted to. Or you can just go, hey, I know this thing underneath the square, it has to be greater than zero. So I'll give you a few minutes, let's go. And then I'll help you out with some of those. Who wants to have a go? What about E? What's your X values for E? Do you agree it just keeps going and going and going? So once again, yeah. Can you say the same about your Y values? Do they keep going and going and going? Well, if you're looking upstairs, absolutely, they keep going and going and going. But could it, could the Y value be minus 5? No, because no, you've got this limit here. Okay, so for our Y value, it can be anything from minus 1 and up. So how do we say that? Um. How do we say it could be minus one or up or above? Correct. So greater than, and we check it's equal to because it's a closed in dot, greater than or equal to minus one. Happy with that? Anyone um, wanting to play along? We're doing G. So look at your X values, Murray Meister, and you're just going, I mean from here, because we've got the arrow, so it just keeps going and going, could be anything. And then you look to the left, can it keep going and going this way? No, because it's got this stopping point. So what would you say then? It's four and beyond, right? Infinity and beyond, greater than? greater than or equal to minus 4. Do you see? Yeah? Now your y value, your range, home, home on the range, can we say that the range can be any value? So here, it's going up, it's going up, it's going up. But can it be anything below minus 3? No. Can it be anything above minus 3? Minus 3, minus 2, uh, yep. Just so it can be all of those. So we're happy. It's greater than or equal to. <clears throat> um, I'll leave you with I. Like Just be really careful because there is a section for I with your range where it cannot be. But I think if you look at the answers and you investigate it will be pretty obvious so could you hello over the weekend you're going to do two things boys at the back thanks going to do two things i don't think it's going to take that much time to finish the rest of this exercise you are going to those who need to look at i'll pop somewhere on there it says simultaneous whatever i'll pop that on there a couple of videos to remind yourself about simultaneous equations substitution and elimination because that should be a reminder um, did scare me a bit that you had not used your graphics calculator to solve that before but you can see it's quite simple the next thing 
and you're going, my God, something else. Yes, something else. Does this look, hello, does this look like a foreign language? A little bit. And you go, now all of a sudden, what on earth? We've got a round dot happening. What does this mean? Yeah, it's not. It's not dot product. So this should not take too long. Look at the time. We've only got like five, six minutes and this is all it will need because it's part of work that you've already done. I'm going to say again, this stuff here is more eastern state. All right. So when we've got G of F, Gough, no, it's not Gough Whitlam. What this is actually meaning for us, right, in South Australia, it is G of F of X. G of F of X. Now, we should know this from the notation stuff that we just did. It says, it, this would say, go to your G function and wherever X is, replace it with F of X. Okay? When we look at this, this is now saying G of F of yeah, negative 1. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find what is F of minus 1. I'm just going to do that to the side. F of, you've got to be really careful when you say that, not F of, F of, F of minus 1. What is this telling us to do? Go to your, now we've got two functions here. That's why we're using the different letters. Go to your F, wherever X is, replace with minus 1. And we go, we've just done that. This is not difficult, correct? So 6 times minus 1, are you happy I'm just putting minus 6? Not writing the 6 times minus 1. Take 5 equals minus 11. We. Oui. So now what this actually means is this is G of, well, f of minus 1 is minus 11. So they're just combining two together. Now, why they didn't do that all at once, I don't know. They put that other notation in the middle. Okay, what is this saying? Go to g, wherever x is, replace with minus 11. 1, 21, take 11 equals 110. Let's do another one. This is in your book. This is saved. You don't have to write this down. It's saved. I'd rather you just listen. Okay. So this is saying F of <laughs> F of zero. So you're going to find what is F of zero. Go to your F function, wherever X is. Replace it with zero. It's minus 5. So this is now saying find f of, are you happy? Just staring at me, are you just staring at me? What am I meant to think? So go to your f function wherever x is, replace it with minus 5. Minus 30 take 5 equals minus 35. And of course, you could cut a few lines because you've got a calculator. Did we say to pack up? I don't think we did. So, your homework, my petals. 4, 5. Mm. You can use technology to graph this, you know, if you need to. See how you go again graph look at the function you're going to get your graphs it becomes a question like this if you get too stuck on eight leave a gap right leave a gap because i reckon oh that one might be a little bit difficult some of those might be tricky so do you want to leave those we'll do them together monday morning but this stuff I think, again, the bell hasn't gone yet. This stuff, I think you could do pretty easily. It's just subbing, 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 subbing. So have a look at your examples and see if you can do at least one, two, three.
okay? And you've got to look at the videos for simultaneous. Love you. I'll pop it on Teams. Read your... Bell has not gone. If you look here at lessons, I'll pop the homework underneath and on Daymap now that it's back. But can everybody access Daymap? You're not on my list. Okay, so I think I'll just pop it on here just to make sure. So you go to lessons, I'll put the video and put the homework underneath.